Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk a little bit about ponchos. I've got a little bit of a gear review for you. Now, the poncho and poncho liner system has been used by the military for a long time. And as such, most veterans have a special place in their heart for it. But somewhere over the years, I seem to have lost mine. <laughs> actually found the liner, but I couldn't find the poncho. So I thought, hey, no big deal. I'll just get online and order another one. After all, they're all over the place and they're dirt cheap, right? <laughs> yeah, well they used to be. Not so much anymore. In fact, they're pretty tough to find. And whenever you do find them, they're commanding a pretty high price. So I had to look at some other brands. Now, I ran across one called Helicon. And I looked on YouTube for some reviews and I found some, but none of them were in English. <laughs> so I thought, well, let me give it a try and I'll do a review of my own. So this seems pretty comparable to the actual USGI poncho. It comes in this stuff sack here. I actually kept the tag on here. It says it's 100% polyester. Here's the back of the tag. I couldn't really tell much of a difference just looking online between these and the actual USGI ponchos. So I went ahead and ordered it. I don't need to tell you guys how useful these are. Good multi-use item. Here it is. See it's got the hood. It's even got a hood closure system. Very much like the US poncho. In fact it's designed exactly the same. Just a little different color. You know, the ones on the U.S. ponchos are kind of green and white. This is just black. But it works exactly the same. You've got snap closures on the side. You've got grommets. These are good high quality ones. And the only main difference that I've been able to find that this is a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter material. It still seems very durable and it's just slightly smaller. And I'm going to show you guys that here in a little while. So far I'm very impressed. Now, I don't have to tell you guys what all you can do with it, but let me show you here in just a moment what I've typically done with these. Stay tuned. Alright, so you can see these snap closures on here are pretty much identical to the ones on the US poncho. Now you can hook two of these ponchos together if you want to. You've also got grommets on the mid portion as well as on the bottom of the poncho so that's going to help us out a lot. All right, this is probably the most basic shelter system that you can make with a poncho. A good old-fashioned lean-to. Now we got my poncho liner set out here. It is water resistant, but ideally you would want a ground cloth. But if this is all you had, hey, this ain't bad. I've stretched out a lot worse than this. I've actually got a fair amount of room in here too. See, I've got my hood tied up here. And I've got that tied to a tree back behind me. Now that's going to keep this from flopping around too much in the wind. It also gives me a little bit of extra room in here too. So let me take you around and show you how this is strung up. Alright, so as you can see, this is nothing fancy. This took me all of, I don't know, two or three minutes to set up. I just tied a couple of quick taut line hitches on the side here. Same thing here. Of course, you can make that a whole lot more secure if you wanted to. For stakes, I just use these small twigs. And here's the hood. I've just got it twisted around. I've got this cord tied to it. And it's tied to this tree right here. Here's how it looks from the back. You see that woodland camo actually looks really good. 
See, you wouldn't have to be too far away for that to just disappear. There you go. It even looks nice and cozy in there, huh? <laughs> Alright, so even though the old lean-to works really well, it never fails in a bad storm, inevitably the wind is going to shift directions on you, and you're going to end up getting wet. So it helps to know more than one type of shelter. Now, even though this is the one I use the most often, there's another one that I use that helps in well, stronger rainstorms. I'm going to show you that right now. Alright, this one's a little bit harder to show because there's not as much room on the inside. But this is what's normally called the plow point shelter. As you can see by looking at the top of it, we've got one corner pulled out here to this tree. And we've got the other corners staked down. We also once again have the hood tied up to this line that goes up to this tree. That's to give us a little bit more extra room on the inside. Now, as you might imagine, this is going to protect you from the weather a whole lot better than the lean-to. Alright, this final one is what I like to call the Infantry Classic. <laughs> The old bivy bag set up. So here we have the poncho working kind of like a bivy bag. It's a waterproof barrier with your poncho liner inside, kind of like a sleeping bag. As you see, we've got we've got these snapped together here and kind of rolled over at the end. Now doesn't this look comfortable? <laughs> It doesn't look too bad here, but if you ever spend a night like this with the bugs crawling all over your face, it's not the best. But hey, if that's what you got, that's what you got. And it's better than nothing. You can also use this as an improvised hunting blind. Alright, so here's the whole thing rolled up. Now this is the poncho and poncho liner. Now this is not compressed at all. You've got plenty of room to compress this. You could probably take this down by about half. If you get a really good compression sack, you can get these down to somewhere around the size of a Nalgene bottle. So that's pretty good. And the two of these together used like a sleeping bag. It'll keep you warm down to about 50 degrees Fahrenheit or so. So, not bad. Alright, so now I've got the poncho liner stretched out. You can see I've got this corner pretty much lined up with the poncho. So we come to this side and we can see how much extra we have. It's quite a bit. close to about six inches of extra material that we have on a poncho liner versus the actual poncho. And that's not a deal breaker for me. It's, hey, everything still works. And in addition to that, it makes the whole thing lighter. But if you're an exceptionally tall guy and you really need that extra length and that extra width, it may be something to think about. You may want to hold out for an actual GI poncho versus getting the Helicon. Alright, this is how the poncho looks when you're actually wearing it. Again, I'm five foot nine, and you can see the sleeves come just above my wrist and just below my knee. So, fits pretty good. 
There you go. Now, you've got actually kind of small arm openings here with these snaps. Now, if you're wearing heavy, bulky clothes, you may want to unsnap that top snap here. But just for normal summertime wear, you might want to keep that as a fairly small opening. Especially if you're doing anything with your arms that requires your wrist to be above shoulder level. Because the rain's just going to drip all through there. And you're going to end up getting wet. But, hey, this works pretty good. Now, I had the perfect opportunity to test this out the other day. We had a good hard driving rain that I was able to get out in for about 20 minutes. Now, I put the camera up on the back porch because it's not waterproof. And I just got out in the rain and walked around just like normal. So, let's see how that did. Really coming down out here now. All right, now the moment of truth. On my hands, my watch band, my legs. Yeah, at least from here down, it's completely soaked. My glasses are soaked and fogged up. Well, that ain't too bad. I got a couple little wet spots right here. A little bit right there. That's not bad at all. Just a couple little spots. That's where uh, kind of in the, in the seam here where it snaps together. I guess some blew in there. Yeah. I mean, from here down, it's completely soaked. My boots are soaked. My hair is dry. My shirt's pretty dry. I'd say from here up is dry. Alright, I'd say that's a success. Alright, so as you can see, that worked out pretty well. I only had a couple small wet spots on me. That's not unique to this poncho, that's unique to this style of poncho. Anything that has the open sides, eventually some rain is going to come through. Now the only other problem that I saw was where it was hemmed over, uh, right around my wrist area. Some moisture did get in between the layers of fabric, and although it didn't get me wet right there, it took a little bit longer to dry out. So if that's going to be a problem, you just put a little seam sealer on there and it fixes it right up. So, how does this compare with other ponchos like the USGI poncho? Uh, well, it's smaller, it's more compact. You can scrunch that down to about the size of a softball. Uh, this comes in different patterns and colors. I went with US Woodland because that's what I'm used to and it works well out here. Uh, as far as the price goes, it's comparable. Uh, if you find a USGI poncho these days, one in good condition, you can expect to pay somewhere around 40 bucks. Uh, one of these, if you have to get it shipped to you, you're gonna pay just a little bit under that. So you get a little bit of a price edge here. Um, it's made in Poland not cheap Chinese knockoff stuff <laughs> so I think it's gonna last a good long time I'm pretty satisfied with this the only deal breakers might be if you're really tall uh, that extra length on the GI poncho may help you out so anyways guys that is all the time that I have for today I hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time
Thumbs up.